Hey, joining me now is charting man Dan McDermott from the Chart Guys at chart guy, thechartguys.com. Dan, welcome back. Glad to be back, James. Nice to see you. You too. So, Dan, it's quite the uh, spectacle in the market uh, in the last 24 hours with, uh, on the one hand, Afria uh, coming out or being the subject of a short strategist report that clearly designed to undermine confidence in the stock while almost simultaneously the announcement that Kronos Group was in talks with Altria in terms of a potential transaction. Now, uh, you are telling me that the indications of this sort of uh, activity is apparent in the charts. Why don't you walk us through that? Well, we could see, we put out daily videos every day after the market closes, and we could see that there was uh, some anomalies with these charts. It was very clear Cron was standing out as the lead bull out of the major five names, and the major five that I watch for the Canadian sector are uh, CGC, ACB, APHA, TLRY, and Cron. So Cron out of those five was very clearly over the last two weeks the lead bull, and APHA was very clearly the lead bear. So we make note of that, and it definitely stands out to us. And then when something like this comes out and the news comes out, it's very clear APHA was the weakest because these shorts were establishing their positions. They're certainly fully into their positions before their report ever comes out. And whoever's behind this, this cron rumor was likely loading on the week or the two weeks leading up into this you know, rumor being released. So a lot of fundamental, you know, surprising the markets. But if you were watching the charts day by day, it was clear that these little minute differences, we could see that one was strong and one was weak comparative to the rest of the sector. Right. And so were you able to profit from the, that anticipation? I personally missed the cron signal. The cron signal was the bull break, and that happened on Thursday. Actually, that happened Friday. And I was away. I was traveling Friday and was unable to enter that trade. But we had members in our chat room enter on the break of 904 and 908, which was the clear bull signal. And then right into Monday, just extreme bull breakout and following through with that clear technical signal, which was, again, 908. That level breaking on the US side of things was the go signal as a bull. OK, I guess uh, you can walk us through those charts visually now. So what we're looking at here is CGC on the daily time frame. And we always want to look at CGC first, as it is the sector leader. So when I'm comparing individual names and saying, are they stronger than the sector? Are they weaker than the sector as a whole? I'm watching CGC as my baseline to measure everything else against. So we can see the last two weeks for CGC, it's been in a pretty contained range. So pretty much flat, straight across, not a whole lot going on. So when we're comparing Cron and APH to it, I'm wondering, are we seeing the same kind of action or how does it compare? So for Cron, the daily time frame had a very common pattern, and this is what we call an equilibrium pattern. It happens after periods of significant volatility. So we had all this volatility, but then what the market generally does is it starts tightening up with higher lows and lower highs and just a tighter and tighter range. And we like to play the break of that tightening range as a clear signal. So here we go with higher lows, lower highs, tighter, tighter. And then here on Friday, there's our bull signal. We broke the lower highs. 908 and 904 are our lower highs, which broke. And then we got the significant follow through by the bulls just uh, yesterday. And now that we're seeing that spike in volatility, we can zoom into the hourly time frame, and we have yet another equilibrium pattern. So I'm turning on extended hours, but it's the same thing. We have the high, the low, a lower high, and now a higher low. And it's just a tightening range after periods of large volatility, and we play those breaks. So we're getting ready for another break on Cron sometime in the near future on the hourly. But back to the main point, the bottom line was the daily chart gave us a clear bull signal. While CGC was trading flat near its lows of the pullback, Cron was very clearly above its lows of the pullback, down at 650, and it gave us that signal. And inversely, APHA, on the daily time frame, the last two weeks, has been a very clear downtrend, just lower highs, lower lows. And again, we go back to CGC. CGC's straight across near its lows, but APH was just continuously setting lower lows. And that was an indication that there was obviously a lot more bearish pressure on the stock. And now that we have the news come out and these huge gap downs, it's very clear that this was the, the shorting group establishing their position. And now they're likely doing some covering 
unless they truly believe that it's going to zero. I never believe these short targets. I always think that these shorts are definitely covering after this kind of drop. And it's going to be a, a drama fest from here in terms of, you know, how is APHA going to respond? Are they going to have significant evidence that's going to come out? But at this point, it's a, a dark cloud over the sector, what has happened to APHA. And it's the kind of thing where even if these allegations are not 100% true, you know, it would be irresponsible for us to talk to our friends and say, yeah, check out this company. You know, we're going to point people to CGC. That's the safe bet. And now that there's this hazy, dark cloud over APHA, like I said, regardless of if everything is true or not that this report has talked about, it is a significant setback for this company, and it's a big hit to its legitimacy. Mm -hmm. Dan, interestingly enough, the, uh, the question of believability uh, and accuracy in both of these cases, both Kronos and and Afria are interesting because on Afria's case, it's a question of, well, the report was issued by a declared short strategist. And reading through the report, you can see that they are, in many cases, you know, biased towards the worst case interpretation of certain circumstantial evidence pieces. On the Kronos and Altria side, it's a little cleaner because there was a rumor, and then Kronos came out and confirmed the rumor, but they had to disclose that they were not entirely you know, sure that any deal was going to conclude. And so my question is, is there an expectation on your part that the charts will show prior to the actual release of the information that either one, one side is believed or the other side is believed, or are they, if, they're, if they're both turn out not to be as egregious or positive in the other case as they seem to be on the surface. Will that be indicated in some kind of technical uh, indicator? To a certain degree, yes, and we can we can see who is winning the battle. For example, this morning we were watching the low of yesterday for APHA pre-market, and then we saw APHA come out with their rebuttal and their response, their press release. And we could see very clearly, okay, this is not doing anything for the bulls. If anything, this is strengthening the bears. They're saying, really, that's all you got? And so we could see with the gap down open that the bears still had complete control. So I always put myself in the opposing side. I'm not short APHA nor long right now, but I put myself in the mindset, if I were short, what are the signals that would lead for me to want to cover that position? And obviously at this point, there is really nothing going on that has the shorts looking to cover. So it's, it's likely, I mean, this is the kind of thing where, you know, halts, we had a halt pre-market for this news to come out. So the technicals are not going to tell us when a halt is coming, obviously. So playing these kind of drama ridden, you know, news sensitive plays are going to be a lot higher risk and higher reward. But with regards to your original question, I mean, we could see even with Cron, we could tell it was a rumor reaction because from the, the high of the bull reaction, we ended up pulling back two hours later, all the way down and giving back uh, 15, more than that, almost a 20% a pullback from that top to the to pull, the pullback. So that tells me it's a rumor. There's not a ton of confidence that that deal is going to go through. Otherwise, we would have seen very brief consolidation, and the bulls would have held really close to that high of the day. That didn't happen, so that tells me it's a rumor, and we have to be cautious as bulls on Cron because it could very easily just be one of these other rumors that we've heard about. You know, when Canadian MJ hype was full blown, we were hearing about Coke, we were hearing about all these cigarette companies. So the the size of the pullback led me to take it all with a grain of the salt and remind me that it is just a rumor. Mm -hmm. So has the extreme sort of questions of integrity that have been attributed to Afria, have they had the effect of putting a real dark cloud on the cannabis sector as a whole? And is that indicated technically? Yes, without a doubt, we are seeing bulls put on the brakes. We're seeing even USMJ names are taking a hit and just pulling up you know, Charlotte's Web, it just had, they had an equilibrium that I was just talking about, the tightening range, and it broke bearish the last two days pretty significantly. And we can go through and look at all of these names. And, you know, MedMen was already having some issues already, but it's just in a straight downtrend, no sign of the bulls whatsoever. So we're seeing the USMJ names take a pretty decent hit today. ITHUF, uh, IAN, IAN is also with a clear bear break, testing its lows. So without a doubt, again, regardless of whether it's true or not, and like you said, the shorts definitely have their intentions, and they stretched on a couple of things. Uh, one of our members made a good point that the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, but it is a dark cloud that is 
you know, it's going to scare away retail traders and investors from this space until it gets a little bit more legitimate. So still the Wild West out there and the bears have full control of this space right now. And we're watching for Catalyst to change that. And it's looking like for the U.S. that we're probably going to have to see some, you know, federal legal changes in order for a significant catalyst to hit. Sure, sure. So the essence of the Afria uh, question revolves around the overpayment for assets that one of its directors sold to the company after acquiring them and marking that up. And they're holding out this, uh, this fairness opinion by a Canadian investment bank as their you know, reason for justifying these valuations. So do you think that there's a follow-on effect that's gonna happen here where the investing marketplace is now going to look at the valuations of all companies that have been making acquisitions and calling into question what was paid and who owned them prior to them being vended into the public companies? I would assume so, absolutely. And even I think it's even a wake-up call to you know some of these banks that are putting price targets on these companies. And I forget who it is off the top of my head, but they released earlier this morning that you know, hey, you know, APHA is now under review. Some things have been brought to our attention, and clearly these banks are not sending people out on the ground to do in-depth investigations like this. So I think it's a wake-up call for everybody involved to say, hey, you know, we kind of just assume this was legitimate, and if it's not legitimate, everybody's reputation is going to take a hit that's been involved with this company to a certain degree. So I think it, like I said, it puts on the brakes for everybody in this space right now. And it's honestly, it's probably a good thing to weed out any kind of, of negative associations with sketchy things that companies are doing. And we want to weed out all those bad players and have our shiny, presentable, best you know, leaders of the sector. And this is just one of the growing pains of the sector to get to that point. You bet. Well, fascinating as usual, Dan. Thank you very much for your input. We'll talk to you next week.